Check. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Hello, good morning, happy Sabbath, guys. So, I, I, I when I preach, I, I kind of move around a lot. So if I get you guys doing this, so you don't be surprised if that happens. And I have my notes here, so if you catch me, you know, coming here, then oh, I'm, I'm gonna walk away back here because I gotta check some points today. But um, so just to guys let you know, if you were checking the bulletin and you see the name, it says Kadim Alseri. If it's a complicated name, it's it's Kadim. And uh, to say in Arabic, it's called them, but everyone just says KJ because it's a complicated name. Um, I'm a senior here at TAA, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity to come speak because it's a privilege to be in leadership. It's really hard to lead people because I reflect the image of God, and uh, yeah. But I want to have a shout out to Pastor Lexi and Storm Ministries because, yeah, hey, clap. Uh, if you guys did not know, uh, they've been singing nonstop this week, and, and like a couple of these guys have been singing like three services, like Vespers last night, then chapel, and then today. So uh, again, just give a hand to like the worship group, yeah. So um, today's uh, sermon is going to be about the gift of self-love. He's like, oh, I'm tired of hearing about sermons about love. I'm just like, guys, God is love. <laughs> Since God is love, you get to hear it quite often. So God is always has been, always will be, and always has. So so will love be. Love always has been, always will be, and always has. That's why it's so important to talk about this concept of love. Love is uh, who we are supposed to be and how we're supposed to act. So the reason I use this verse today in Matthew uh, Matthew tw- uh, 22, 22 uh, verse 39 to 37 is because if you can't have one without the other, if you, if I go back to it, it says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. It's the first and greatest command. And the second one is equally important. Equal. Love your neighbor as yourself. See, when we talk about Christian love, we talk about selflessness, right? But that has caused us to skip ourselves in love. God also requires us to love ourselves. Since, you know, there's nothing wrong with selflessness. We want that. We need that. But sometimes we skipped ourselves. We didn't require ourselves to be a person. We said, I need to focus on uh, on other people. But God says, hold on. You're just as important as somebody else. Some of us has just skipped over ourselves. He said, yeah, that's me. I'm going through problems. No. Let me help someone else. But God says, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back to the source. We need to see your problems. God loves you, and he requires you to be helped. So why why do we need self-love? Why is it important to love ourselves? Because without self-love, we cannot love other people. Love others as yourself. If I treat myself bad, I'm going to treat you bad. (laughs) So I have to learn how to love myself. And the, how I came up with this sermon is, like, uh, I always talk to God, I always have conversations with God alone at nighttime. And for the last couple months, I said, Lord, if love is the greatest thing of all, show me how to love difficult people. And God was like, okay, love yourself. And I was just like, oh, no. <laughs> so I had to learn how to love myself. And through time, God showed me how to love myself and develop patience for myself. And I kid you not, the last couple of days, uh, they just have been tied into self-love. Marquette was preaching at chapel yesterday, and uh, Natalie was preaching last night, and it just ties into self-love. So I believe God is, is trying to tell us something right now because it's unique, a unique signs from God. So I believe you guys should really pay attention to what's happening with my words. So this, how, how do we love ourselves? Well, here's the thing. The number one problem we have in this world today is self-doubt. It's self-doubt. See, everything starts from you. Every decision you make starts from you. You know Adam and Eve? You know Eve's first problem? What was Eve's first problem? Self-doubt. See, look, Satan said, hey, Eve, are you sure you're made in the image of God? He said, maybe I'm not. See, if we do not know who we are, how can we truly love ourselves? Because we're going to be loving something that God did not create. So we need to know who God created so we can truly love that aspect of ourselves. Because I may be a loving image of myself that's from the world and not of God. So we need to know why God created us in our identity in God. 
We have to understand why God made us a certain way to become who God called us to be. And once we understand that, we can truly learn to love other people. Because as soon as we see ourselves how God wanted us to be made, we can start looking at other people and say, Hey, you, I see your potential. I see your potential. I see your potential. I see what God has called you for this world. No one, God did not create anyone without a purpose or meaning. No one creates anything without a meaning. So, do not compare yourself to other people as well. Self-comparison will destroy you, and I've seen it to other people, and it's terrible right now because of social media. Oh, man. Social media is also, like, awesome some days, and other days you just want to kick it in the face. Like, ah, you got to turn off the news, you know? You're on YouTube, and you see, like, somebody died from COVID. Somebody got in a car accident. I'm like, show me something good. This is not good for me. And you're comparing other talents with, you know, like, I... Riley, oh, Dale's here. That's perfect. I'm going to use you, Dale. Dale is huge. He's six, like, six, five, Samoan monster. You know, he can bench like 400 pounds. I cannot compare myself to this guy. And often we do. We expect ourselves to be just as big as him. But God has called me to be someone else because I'm, you know, I'm skinny. I'm fast. Dale can't run faster than me. Sorry, Dale. Sorry. <laughs> God gives us different gifts. So we're saying, hey, we got to value our, what God has given us in order to love other people. Then we see other people's gifts and said, wait, what did God give you that for? What could God do with that? So we got to understand we cannot compare ourselves. That will slowly tear us in half. Psalms 139, 14. See, I love David because David just mastered self-love. I just got to learn that. That's probably why he loved God so much because... He figured out how to love himself. See, Psalm says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. This man said, Thank you, God, for making me wonderful. How, have you ever said that? Do you ever thank God for making me wonderful? Just, you wake up in the mirror and look at myself and say, Yeah, God made that. Ooh. I, I look at myself all the time. You can ask my mom. She just, I go in the mirror, I start flexing, and I, ah, I look at my muscles. Yeah, it's a it's a guy thing, <laughs> but um, that's what we we gotta we have to face the fact we say we gotta start talking ourselves like that. But here's the thing, in Matthew seven, verse three through five, it says, "And why and why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have your own log in yours? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye, and you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite!" First, get rid of the log in your eye, and you'll see enough to deal with the speck in your own friend's eye. There's some of you saying, how can you not love your neighbor, but you don't even love you? Don't even get me started. There's people that say, I hate this person. I'm like, but you say you love God? It, it's a circle. God's really good with this circle thing. I don't know, Trinity, you know. Just God has like this thing. Everything goes around, comes around. That's what mom always used to say. <laughs> Uh, it goes around, comes around. We have to figure out how to love ourselves first. For some of you, just dealing with self-doubt, bad images, and we cannot truly love our neighbor. And the thing about self-love is this. We have to figure out why God created us in order to love someone else. So the Word of God talks about transformation and about being a progress. So we cannot judge our neighbors if they're going through certain problems in life. And God has stressed this to me this whole week. He's been showing me signs. It's like unique signs. Like one minute I'm reading it in my book. Then I check the Bible verse of the day. Then it talks about it too. Then I go to chapel and they're just talking about it. I'm like, okay, God, I'm listening. You have my attention. Then I go on Instagram. Then the pastor starts po uh, posting about it. It's like, okay, KJ, tell me what it is. Um, it's transformation slowly and progressively. When it comes to loving myself, the thing is, I really beat myself up after just small things I do. There's some things like, you know, I maybe hurt someone's feelings. I'll go home and beat myself up. You know, you made a bad play, uh, beat myself up about it. You had to, you know, bomb the test. I beat myself up about it. And God's saying, every time you sin, stop beating yourself up. I realized I woke up at 3 a.m. one night and I, and I realized something. If God doesn't bully me after I sin, why do I do it to myself? 
Why do I do it to myself? Why do I keep allowing myself to be stuck in this prison? So you have the keys right here. God sets you free, but you're not saying, let me grab my keys. You have the key, but you're not doing it. You are not doing it up. And that's, that's ridiculous. He has a key. Out. <laughs> no, but we seriously have the key. And God's been stressing this enough because I'm a perfectionist and I've been slowly trying to grow out of this. I've like researched things to uh, help me get out of it. Like if I'm being really perfectionistic one day, I'd purposely fail. Like, what do you mean like purposely fail? Like I'll purposely mess, uh, purposely miss a basketball shot, um, uh, stuff like that. You know, purposely drop a catch, try to get that perfectionist thing out of me. The thing about uh, the scripture is this is we are reborn, right? But when you're born, you have to slowly have to learn things. So when we're learning things, it takes time to develop. We have to develop ourselves into something. So God's saying to you today, transformation takes time and development. So not judge your character off of who you are right now. It takes time. Transformation is hard. It really is. And you're comparing yourself to people on social media or other people's walks with Christ. You're like, man, look at this pastor. He might be perfect. Let me say what, guys. Your pastors are not perfect. They can tell you right now. I said, I have sinned too. Everyone in the Bible but Jesus has sinned. Apostle Paul was not perfect. He's killed people and said, I did it for Jesus, but no. Peter denied Jesus three times. I can go on and on. David sinned against God. He, he, uh, he saw a woman and um, committed spiritual adultery. It was really bad. Uh, I can go... It, it was really bad. I'll just say that. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 8 it says, for the, for the Lord, for the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have that veil removed can see the reflection of the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, make us more and more like Him as we change into His glory and His image. When I found that verse, it showed me something. Every trial and every test God has given me was to slowly refresh me to something God wanted me to be. So there's, there's an original version of yourself. It's um, God created us to be a certain way for a certain purpose, like I've been saying. And slowly through time, God will develop you through trial and error. True leadership is tested through trials. A true leader is consistent. A true leader is stable. You know, it's unwavering. That's why you can always trust God with your problems, because he's always stable, he's consistent. And do not trust a leader that does not love himself. Because one day, he can have a problem, but be bashing himself when someone needs you for something. Never trust a leader that doesn't love himself. Because if you, if you put your trust in someone like that, you will fall apart. Leadership is extremely important for the kingdom of God. Especially for the righteous man. The thing is, we will fail. And it's... Uh, Proverbs 24, 16. For a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked stumble in disaster and collapse. It says the righteous man will fall. You are inevitable to fall. You will fail. You fail. You fail. Everyone here will fail. I'm going to fail. But here's the difference between Judas and Peter. Peter failed three times. After Judas failed, he killed himself. It's like, wow, how can you be that harsh? This is the reality of the Bible. We have to get up after we failed. Because you know how many times I have sinned, but I got back up, and next time I'm slowly stronger. You know, the Bible says, after temptation, temptation produces endurance. Every time I'm faced with a trial, I slowly become stronger with it. Uh, when I wanted to play football, Oh, uh, first and foremost, I was skinny. I was really skinny. Tiniest person you ever meet. But I trained so hard because I really wanted this. Like, I started out doing like 100 curl-ups a day. But now I'm one of the strongest people my, some of my friends know. Except Dell. <laughs> but it takes time to develop this. But we have to get up. That's the difference. We have to give up. I mean, get up. Give up. Don't give up. <laughs> but... I have to I have to express this the most though. Be careful what you tell yourself. See, it's 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 hard to love somebody in general, but it's harder to love somebody that you're closer to. But here's the thing. 
There's no one that talks to you more than you. So the closest person to you is not your mom, sorry, not your sister, sorry, not your best friend, sorry. It's not even God, well, sort of talks to you the most. Talks to you the most is going to be you. So you have to be careful what you tell yourself. Because if you talk to yourself bad, you're going to see yourself bad. The Bible says, whatever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How do you see yourself? Do you tell yourself, I'm marvelously made? Thank you, God, for making me this way. Or do you think of yourself as an other way? God stresses this, but we don't see it because we're always skipping it. Because we think it's selfish to love ourselves. But let me tell you what about leadership. What I figured out about being in leadership is whatever I do for me, I, it's going to help someone else. Everything I've done in my life has helped somebody else. But everything I have negative about me has hurt somebody else. So I help myself. I say, I have to go to bed at this time so I can help my neighbor and help myself. I do this for myself so I can help my friends, to help people in need. For my teammates in basketball, I purposely go to bed early, I eat right. My teammates sacrifice for me and I sacrifice for them. That's how team works. That's how leadership works. We got to love ourselves. We got to sacrifice for ourselves and we got to tell ourselves good things about ourselves. We need to do this routinely and we have to do this often. I love, I told you, David in the Bible was just a master at talking to himself. And here's, here's an example of this. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. That's one of my favorite verses in the Bible because every time I'm about to fall, I remind myself, why am I discouraged? I have a God. I have a hope. The key to have better faith is to have hope first. We got to need that first. Hope fuels faith. We got we to gotta be careful in what we tell ourselves. We got we to gotta learn how to pray like David. And when I, when I started praying to God about how to love myself, I came up with this prayer. I do not care if you think you know how to love yourself or you love yourself well, if you hate yourself, um, if you hate somebody else. I, it doesn't matter who you are, how old you are. I need you to pray this prayer now or later on. And it was this prayer. I pray this to God. God looked at everybody and said, you are redeemable and lovable. So there's nobody in this world or universe that can love me better than God. So I prayed this prayer. I said, Lord, show me how you love me. Because there's things I do not like about myself. And I said, Lord, show me how you learned to love me when I didn't like that about myself. That's what I prayed to God. I said, Lord, show me how to love myself in this area and that area. So it started out, I slowly learned how to forgive myself. So I learned how to forgive myself. I learned how to be patient with myself. That was the biggest thing. I struggle like every other person. And don't, don't, don't let the enemy convince you that you don't have struggles like anyone else. I struggle too. And I'm pretty sure everyone in here also has that. So I had to learn how to be patient with myself and be kind with myself. So I want you guys to practice self-talk. I'm going to go over this again. Learn your identity in Christ. Pray this prayer. Pray that prayer. Learn, show, ask God to show you who you created. Ask God how to learn how to talk to yourself. Ask God to learn how to love yourself for better people. Ask God to show you how to transform yourself and ask God to help you get back up again after you stumble. Ask God to help you love yourself. So guys, I hope you go home today thinking about this. And I really hope you guys have transformed and the Holy Spirit can help you with this. So bow your heads as I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, you can look at your children and you can help them love themselves. Show them how you love them so they can love them, uh, better love themselves. Help them understand themselves and their identity in Christ. Help them show what you created because you make everything wonderful. There's not a single thing you haven't done. So thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So, guys, we have uh, hands and feet after church today. So I encourage you guys to go do that. And I hope you guys have a good day today. Uh, happy Sabbath, guys.